Number four, Ohio State barely squeaking by Nebraska. 21 to 17. It was a very, very close call for the Buckeyes in that noon slate. Let's go over their highest graded players, uh, starting off with their wide receiver, Carnell Tate. 80.7 grade in this one. Josh Fryer, the offensive tackle, is 77.7. Jordan Hancock, the corner, 76.1. Donovan Jackson, the offensive guard, who actually played a little bit left tackle as well, 74.5. Denzel Burke, the other corner, 70.2. And Will Howard with a 67.3 grade. Let's go over to Nebraska with their five highest graded players in this game, starting off with their offensive guard, Justin Evans Jenkins at a 77.3. Deshaun Singleton, the safety, 76.7. MJ Sherman, the edge defender, 70.8. Ja'Cory Barney Jr., the wide receiver, 66.3. Ty Robinson, the big D tackle, at a 65.4. And then Dylan Riola, the quarterback, at a 61 grade. Dawn, what was the stat that told the story in a very close call for the Buckeyes. I thought Nebraska played a really good game uh, here, defensively especially, but they're going to feel like they should have won this game because they only went one for four in the red zone. Mm. Two field goals, a touchdown that was really, they had to scratch in. I mean, Ohio State's defense is the part that won them this game. Uh, turnover on downs at the one-yard line uh, after the Will Howard interception in the third quarter. Nebraska just didn't do enough. They just didn't quite step on them to finish them off and they easily and I know they were coming from behind most of this game they were down 14 to 3 early but Nebraska had several opportunities to take their momentum that they had and take take a lead and win this football game with their defense but they went one for four in the red zone they ran 13 plays in the red zone max they only gained 21 yards on those 13 plays with a 56.9 team offense grade uh it, it just they're going to feel like they, they know those opportunities down inside the 10, down inside, um, you know, especially down, the one down on the goal line with the way their defense played in this game. They they feel like they're going to feel like they should have won this ball game. Ohio State, um, they, they really got away with one here because Nebraska, I thought, was the more physical team. I thought their defense was spectacular, especially after the, the first two touchdowns from Ohio State. Um, Nebraska, they're, they're again, they have a young quarterback, obviously a true freshman quarterback. I think they need to add a little bit more receiver because I think the one advantage Ohio State did have is that they covered in this game really well, especially man-to-man. -man. You've talked a lot about Nebraska yeah. against man-to-man -man coverage. It's been a struggle. Um, they blitzed Riola. They went man-to-man. -man. Ohio State's defense just – just did a little bit more than Nebraska's defense could in this game. But Nebraska, had they taken advantage of the opportunities they had in Ohio State territory, they easily could have won this game. They absolutely could have. And, yeah, the, the receivers for Nebraska just really struggle against man man coverage. But, I will, listen, give credit to Nebraska. It would be really easy for a team after getting absolutely embarrassed last week by Indiana to just roll over and die against uh, Ohio State this week. They put up a fight in this one. So really good credit to them for a week after that to uh, to put up a fight against one, one of the best teams in America in Ohio State. Don, my, my side that tells story is a very concerning trend for Ohio State right now. Ohio State averaged 2.6 yards per carry against Nebraska. 74 rushing yards total. This is the first time all season Ohio State had fewer than 150 rushing yards. 150. They had 74 in this game. They had fewer than half of what they have had all season. They've also done fewest rushing yards in a game for Ohio State since we began charting college football in 2014. So I've got to go back even further to see what it actually was the last thing that had this few rushing yards, but it was an awful, awful day for Ohio State's ground game. Negative .518 EPA per run. Worse for Ohio State since their playoff loss to Clemson in 2016, eight years ago. Second worst in the PFF college era for Ohio State. Quinshawn Judkins, 10 carries for 29 yards, 2.9 yards per carry. Trayvon Henderson, 10 carries for 25 yards, 2.5 yards per carry. They only combined for three broken tackles on those 20 combined carries for the two of them. Ohio State, Dolan actually had a 77.6 run blocking grade. So the offensive line was theoretically creating enough holes for them to, to get through, and Junkins and Henderson just were not breaking tackles or making things happen on their own. And the last game they had against Oregon, Junkins had 10 carries for 23 yards, and Henderson, besides the one big run, was kind of held in check as well. This is supposed to be the best backfield in college football, bar none. And over these last two games, it has been the glaring weakness of this Ohio State team right now. A lot of people I saw on Twitter were blaming Will Howard for all these games. He has been the best player on the field for them in like the last two games, and the only reason they've really won offensively is because of Will Howard and those receivers. I cannot believe how bad this backfield has been for Ohio State in the last two games when we thought Quinshawn Junkins going into the year, second best running back in college football for us. Trayvon Henderson, 
five or six for us going into the year as well. They had two of the six best running backs in the nation, and yet they're still not producing. It makes no sense at all right now. So I'm concerned because that, that Penn State run D that we'll talk about in just a second was really good against Wisconsin. It was really good all year. They better get it going against Penn State or else that could be a really, really interesting game. They probably could lose that game as well. Not, not just Penn State. You got Indiana coming coming that's down right. the line too, and that's uh, that's very clearly a real threat to me. They, they're gonna they should have Curtis Rourke back by then. Uh, you got two teams on their schedule. Well. Rivalries. You have three teams on their schedule. Who, Michigan can stop the run, too. Uh, yep, this is a thing. Look, I, we already know the, the premise of this Ohio State team is not for Will Howard to carry them to a no. national title. They're supposed to be the best running game in college football with those two backs. If they – Again, they're not going to run for only 74 yards every week. But yeah. it was also, you're right, it was an issue against Oregon. Oregon yep. did a relatively good job of stopping the run. You can stop – look, if, if Ohio State is going to run the ball like this and they're going to start struggling to run the ball – National title's not coming. No, it's, it's not happening. It's not. They they have to ride these two guys as far as they can go, get more into the play action. And just I, I'm just curious to see how Chip Kelly responds to this because they got the hardest task maybe of their entire season coming next week. And yep. Penn State's defense was terrific against Wisconsin. We will get there in a minute. Uh, they... If they don't, if they're going to rely on Will Howard to win them ball games like they have the last two weeks, it's it's going to get ugly in Ohio State because I, nothing against Will Howard, he's played really I mean, well. He almost beat Oregon. He, yeah. He, yeah, he has played really well, but that's not how this team was designed. And this is a game where they honestly, you feel like this is one where they just got away with it. Yeah, they really did. They they need to run the ball better if they're going to beat Penn State and or Indiana. Yeah, I mean, listen, credit to Will Howard. He literally was the best player for Ohio State in that game. He's a little obviously worse this, this week, but what he averaged like 13 yards per pass still though, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it was due to I the thought, receivers. I thought aside aside from that interception uh, in their own territory, I thought he, I thought he was really good. Yeah, and, and so credit to him. I, I feel a lot better at Will Howard than I did preseason. But I'd still like it, like I said, if you don't have Judkins and Henderson getting going for you, I pff, I, I really am worried about, about them winning a national title. Honestly, so Don, for you though, what was the most impressive part of this Ohio State victory? Well, yeah, let me talk on the defensive side about Jordan Hancock real quick. So Lathan Ransom was out at safety in this game, and he was I would argue with Caleb Downs, they've been the best safety pair in the country. Ransom having a spectacular year, playing a more traditional safety role, uh, but. Uh, he was out for this game, and Jordan Hancock, normally their slot corner was the guy that they moved back to safety, kind of like they did with Ransom for the year, but it had a really good game. Uh, 35 snaps, he played at safety. That was a season high by far. 76.8 coverage grade. Forced a fumble in coverage that um, that Nebraska recovered, but still goes in the grade with a forced fumble. The game-winning interception at the end, I know it wasn't a great throw, throw from Dylan Raiola, but Jordan Hancock keeping things together in their secondary while Lathan Ransom was out, I thought was a huge part of it. Again, Ohio Ohio State's secondary I thought was the best part of their team in this game. Hancock was a big reason at safety while they filled in with some other guys at slot corner. Yeah, definitely. And Jordan Hancock is a forgotten guy in that secondary a lot when you guys have guys like Denzel Burke and Lathan Ransom and Caleb Downs. Another guy that gets forgotten about in this receiving core, Dolan, is Carnell Tate, who's my most impressive part in this game. Because when we talk about the Ohio State receivers, we always only talk about Jeremiah Smith and Emeka Ekbuka because those are two studs, and it makes sense. Carnell Tate, though, very, very talented in his own right. And in this game, he was the best receiver on the field for Ohio State. 80.7 PFF grade, four catches on four targets for 100, 102 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 4.86 yards per route run. It was the first 100-yard game in the sophomore's career as well. So Carnell Tate, really big credit to him, man, because Jeremiah Smith and Mecca Booker are two of the best receivers that we have in college football. And like I said, it's very easy to forget about what else they have at, uh, at Ohio State. But there's a reason why a lot of people consider them to be wide receiver you right now it's more than just one or two guys they got a whole stable of weapons and Carnell Tate was a very highly rated recruit coming out of high school and he proved why in this game he was the best receiver on the field for Ohio State yeah he was I mean it was big you know you need someone to step up in games like this and those are a couple guys that aren't considered their star players that did uh they escaped with a win but they they need to be a lot better against Penn State uh if they're going to win that game in Happy Valley next week <laughs> 